Hi everyone. Back in the middle of March, we here in Canada, along with everyone else in the world, started dealing with a global pandemic. As we know, businesses were ordered shut, the ability to gather for any reason was banned, travel was restricted, borders were closed, we couldn't go to work, and students and teachers couldn't go to school. There started to be lineups just to get into the grocery store. And when you did get in, items were totally missing. Something as simple as grocery shopping became stressful. It didn't take my wife Karen long before talking about planting a vegetable garden. It was March, the timing was just right. So once the ground thawed out, I dug up a good chunk of the front lawn. The front of the house has a sunny southern exposure, so it's perfect for growing vegetables. After churning up the soil and adding a hefty amount of compost, it was ready. Karen planted the seeds and has been busy watering and weeding all spring. We have beans and peas and tomatoes and cucumbers and squash, zucchini, corn, lettuce, Swiss chard, strawberries, and herbs too. Yeah, our pandemic garden is coming along well. And when people walk by the house, they often pause and look. And when they say, you'll have to guard the vegetables, Karen simply says, well, when they're ready, come harvest and help yourself. In the gospel reading for this Sunday, Jesus gathers the twelve. And he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. You know, Jesus loved using plant imagery when talking about people and the kingdom of God. I know the first time that I ever had a large vegetable garden of my own was when I had my first parish out in the country just south of Ottawa. Word got out that I was interested in having a vegetable garden and before I knew it a parishioner came by with his tractor and he plowed up a whole section of the field next to the rectory. Well I was delighted but as you can imagine I didn't realize how much work it was going to be. I was pretty big chunk that he plowed up. But I learned from my farming parishioners that summer that a great garden is not something that can happen in just one year. Indeed, it may take several years of careful work to get most of the weeds out and several seasons before the soil is nicely suited for the plants that you want to grow there. During that summer, I tried to be very diligent and clear out as many weeds as I could of course, this was the first time in years that this field had been used and cultivated, so the weeds were just having a great old time. There was ragweed and milkweed and goldenrod and lamb's quarters and thistles. You name it, it was there. It was hard to keep up. But as I was working, from time to time I would think about the many parables that Jesus talked about about how the kingdom of God is like a garden. Parables about sowers sowing seed in good soil and rocky soil. About vine tenders who prune the vines. About weeds that choke out the plants. About knowing when it is time to harvest what has been sown. So many different parables about the garden. Through my personal experience, I began to realize just how much first-hand experience Jesus must have had regarding gardening. It makes me think of the many parallels between human life and life in the garden. A young garden, freshly churned up, is filled with an abundance of weeds. In order to pluck them out, it takes time and effort and commitment. If you neglect the discipline of checking the garden, then it will soon get overgrown. It becomes impossible to keep up, and then your garden bears very little fruit. Now on the other hand, after much careful weeding, the garden becomes clearer.
fewer and fewer weeds pop up, and it becomes easier to keep them from ruling the garden. The garden will never be totally clear from the weeds. There will always be a seed that floats in from a nearby yard, and the area around the garden will always threaten to creep in. But in time, it becomes much easier to keep it in check, and much easier for plants to bear good and plenteous fruit. This is the way it is with a garden. But is this not also the way it is with us? There are weeds that grow in our life as well. They threaten to keep us from bearing good and plenteous fruit. Do we know the names of these weeds? Can we see them and call them by name? They have names like pride or envy or greed or entitlement. Pride, wanting to imagine that we are somehow more important than others. Envy, wishing we were like others. Greed, always wanting more money and more power. Entitlement, thinking that you deserve something because of who you are. These are pretty invasive weeds. If we don't tend the garden that is our soul, then these weeds, left unchecked, will easily take over and keep us from bearing beautiful fruit, fruit that we were meant to bring forth. We'll end up with lots of ragweed and thistles and not many strawberries. But of course, there is much a garden needs, aside from weeding much that a garden needs other than what we can provide. We work away at a garden because we believe that sufficient rain will fall and that sufficient sun will shine in order for the plant to grow. We don't know that for sure, but we must believe it. In the same way, as we live life, we live with the faith that we too will receive all that we need to grow. Our needs, of course, are different. As human beings, we often feel lonely, and so we need to be loved. We often feel guilty, and so we need confession and forgiveness. We often feel uncertain, and so we need faith. We often feel discouraged, and so we need hope. As a faith community in the midst of a secular society, we try to encourage one another to name and pluck out the weeds that are around and within us. And we encourage one another to experience the faith, the hope, the love and the forgiveness that flow to us from God and from one another. And by doing this, we are doing something that is really quite amazing. We are all playing our part and building up a garden called the Kingdom of God. In all the struggles of our life, and with all the issues that we address in our culture, we are working out the Kingdom of God here on Earth. We may go wrong at times. We may get confused and sidetracked from time to time. But together, we will grow in our awareness of God working out a great plan in our midst. And so as Jesus taught us, let us tend our gardens. Let us work at plucking out those weeds. And let us go forward with confidence, knowing that we will be given all that we need, all that we need to grow and flourish. Because with faith, hope, love, and forgiveness, with these things working in you and me, this garden called the Kingdom of God continues to unfold. Amen.